Good afternoon. I'm back. Linda Tripp, your 4-H issue leader and program educator for Cornell Cooperative Extension in Columbia and Green Counties. And today, can you believe it? It is our last session of a trip to the kitchen DIY goodies. And today we're going to top it off with vanilla no churn ice cream with hot fudge sauce. So something completely different uh, that doesn't involve baking, but it does involve a blender and um, using the stovetop. So uh, let's remember the things you need to have ready before you start is you need to have a clean surface, your hair tied back that's long, your hands clean, and an apron on if you have one, okay? And uh, that's how we're going to get started today. So we have two recipes, and uh, believe it or not, the ice cream recipe is really simple. Um, there are a few th important points that I will uh, be sure to tell you about as we work through this recipe, but let's get started. Now, hopefully you've had your ice, your um, heavy cream and your milk have been refrigerated and you're just taking it out now because heavy cream does not whip very well unless it is really cold. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is measure our heavy cream and we're going to be using our glass liquid measuring cup. Now this is only a one cup measure and we need two cups of heavy cream. So I'm going to measure twice and put it into our blender container. Remember you want to get down to the level of your cup so that you can measure accurately and only get one cup. There's one for me. And a second cup. There we go. So those are two cups of heavy cream. Now, it says that uh, we're going to put the cream in the blender jar. Make sure it's on there, right position, so it's nice and tight. And the most, one of the most important things to remember when you're using a blender is do not turn it on until you have the lid on, okay? And I oftentimes recommend holding your hand on the lid because sometimes it's not all that tight fitting. And when you turn the blender on, the, uh, the items inside might push up and push your lid off. So make sure your lid is on. Now we're going to turn the blender on and process it until the, the whipping cream, the heavy cream makes soft peaks and it isn't gonna take long at all, just like 20 seconds. You can't go too long because if you go too long, then you're going to curdle it and it is going to become butter. And you might as well blend it some more because you're going to end up with butter. So I'd rather you um, uh, run your blender for a few seconds and then check it and then run it again so you don't overdo it, okay? So I'm gonna turn mine on and I have an option on here that is called whip. So this is gonna be a little bit loud, but it won't take long. <laughs> Let's take a look and see how it looks. Take this off. Look at this. It is so thick it will not pour out. See that? And when I dip my spatula in here, it sits up. Okay? That's what you want. You do not want any thicker than that. Now what I'm going to do is I am pushing down the sides which number two of our recipe calls for. Pushing in the sides, and then I'm going to blend for just um, a few more seconds so it gets stiff beaks. And that is where you put your spoon in or your um, spatula in, and it holds that shape. That's only going to be about 10 more seconds. Don't forget your lid. It's a short, short. That's it. 
So we have our very stiff, does not pour out at all, whipped cream. Okay, you all with me? That was quick, really quick. Now we're going to add all of our other ingredients, starting with a cup of sweetened condensed milk. Make sure that you've got sweetened condensed milk, not just evaporated milk, okay? And a cup is a whole can. So just dump that right in. Use your rubber spatula to clean it out. No need to leave any of that good stuff behind. Okay, so that's our condensed milk. We want a fourth cup of whole milk. So, and you surely can use the same measuring cup that you used for the cream because it's all going in the same place. But again, get down to level. Measure your one fourth cup. There we go. One fourth cup of whole milk. It also calls for a fourth cup of light corn syrup. Again, you can measure it in the same liquid measuring cup because it's all going in the same place. I believe in doing my dishes when I'm cooking but I really don't believe in having to do more than I have to. Now this will probably, you want to scrape that out because the, it's pretty sticky. And you want it all to get in. Okay, with me? Now we need some sugar, just two tablespoons. And again, when you measure this, it wants to be just smooth with the top, even with the top, nothing extra. You know, it's not a heaping tablespoon. It's be way too sweet if it has a heaping tablespoon. Okay, so there's two tablespoons of sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, since we're making vanilla no churn ice cream. And really measure that over another place so you don't get too much in your under container. And last but not least, just a little bit of salt, fourth teaspoon of salt. Make sure you read that you're getting the one fourth teaspoon or one fourth TSP. Go in there. Okay, so that is, we added the sweetened, this is number three, if you're following along. Sweetened condensed milk, whole milk, corn syrup, a little typo there, it says corny, but corn syrup, sugar, vanilla, and salt. Now we want to use our rubber spatula and stir this around some, so it doesn't take so long for it to blend up when we blend. Because we really want to keep that air in that whipped cream and that'll make your ice cream more scoopable and not so icy. Now it doesn't need to be smooth, just mixed. So everything's sort of mixed in there, okay? Because you don't wanna break up all that air you already beat into the whipping cream. So we stirred it up. So we wanna put it back on. In there. there we go. Okay, and uh, replace the lid. And number three says blend, um, replace the lid and process until one well combined. That's about 20 seconds again, not very long at all. Should be really stiff. I'm gonna get rid.
rid of my blender here. Get out of the way. And see, it's really stiff. Now you want to bring over your pan, your metal pan. And I have just a regular metal loaf pan um, because mine is uh, got a couple of um, rusty spots in it. I'm going, I got a piece of plastic wrap and I'm going to push it down into the pan. You don't have to do this. You can put it right directly in the pan. But I'm going to do this. That left a lot hangover because we want to cover the ice cream. Yes, it's in there. Okay. Now, you may need a little help dumping this because this is a little bit heavy, okay? But if you need some help, go get some help. We're going to pour it all into the pan. I have to be careful so my plastic wrap doesn't fall in. And use your spatula to get all of that out of there. Spread it out. Go. it a little bit, it helps get the air bubbles out. And then you want to either get out some plastic wrap or hold over your plastic wrap and push it right on the surface so that it does, otherwise it might form a skin on the top, which is safe, but it's just not that appealing. Okay, and we're gonna put that right into the freezer. Okay, got yours in the freezer? I hope so, because I'm going to switch out a few things and then we're going to make our fudge sauce. So I'm gonna put the cream back in the fridge. Throw out my cold butter. Move this. Bring over my hot plate. Put it in. Start that heating up. Hey. Okay. There we go. So the hot fudge sauce. We want to make sure you have a burner. And this is this for this recipe, you may be wanting to have your adult there to help you because we really haven't used the stove top before. And it's very easy to um, if you if you're not aware or just starting out to actually touch the hot burner which will give you a wicked burn. So you don't want to do that. So we need a pot. There we go, here's my pot. And in this pot, number one, I've got this on heating up because this is not, it's not like your stove, so it takes a while. And I'm gonna start on this and if it takes a while to cook or to heat through, then I may end up having to use my stove top behind me. But we'll start here. So we want to first measure out our sugar. We have a whole cup of sugar. Uh, unsweetened hot coke or unsweetened cocoa is, as it says, unsweetened. So you really need to have your sugar. You want to fill that up, not overflowing. You don't need it too sweet. So make sure. There we go. It's even. Putting your cup of sugar. We also are going to be putting in 
um, your milk. And I'm okay with using the same measuring cup you're using. I mean, as long as you don't have a lot of extra stuff in it, but we um, use a spatula to take out um, the corn syrup. So it should be pretty clean. So we need uh, two thirds of a cup. Okay, do you get that? Measure it, it's pretty accurately. Put that in. So, um, it says also to add salt. And you might notice in the uh, ingredient list, we don't have any salt. I did miss that when I double checked and we want a fourth of a teaspoon, one fourth TSP, one fourth teaspoon of salt. Again, not heaping. There we go. And, um, our recipe suggests we use a whisk. Now my whisk is kind of large. This is the only one I have. So I'm gonna go with a smaller wooden spoon. I like wooden spoons for um, when I'm cooking uh, on the stove a lot because I, <laughs> I think they're more comfortable. They don't get hot and uh, they don't scrape the bottom of your pan so much. So I'm just stirring that all together now. And you don't want to like stir it hard. There's no reason to splash anything out of your pan. So now I'm gonna put it on my burner. And uh, you don't want it on high. It says medium low, medium. It really depends on what your stove is like. And your parents, who use the stove will be able to help you out with that. But I know you definitely don't want high because you don't want to burn this. Now this will take a little while. It says five to six minutes um, to get this heated and basically just coming to a boil. Now, do you know what a boil means? It means that it's up to two, about 212 degrees or near that, that's boiling. And it means that you will see bubbles coming up from the bottom. So let's just, this is good, take a bit. So see how this goes. Okay, I am going to pause the video now for just the time that it takes for this. Okay, so be heating. Okay, so mine is starting to bubble around the outside edge. So that's where it says we want to reduce our heat to low. Okay, because we don't want it to boil too hard, but we want it to stay warm while we do the next step. So I'm turning my way down. Actually, it's boiling a little too hard. Let's put it over here for a minute. Now, our next step is going to be measuring our cocoa. And honestly, I always think this is a messy job, but it's what we need to do. And we need a third of a cup. So make sure you use your dry measuring cup, the one that says a third on it. And we're just going to spoon that in there. Don't try to pour it. It's even more of a mess. Just set it right in there. Just try to even it off as much as possible. Okay. Yep, there we go. So we have a third of a cup and we have a sieve, fine mesh sieve. And what our instructions tell us is to hold this over the pan, pour all your cocoa in, and then to tap the pan or the sieve to get the cocoa in. And then that will help you get a nice, smooth um, sauce. 
Um, what I will sometimes do, and this might be easier for you, is just using a spoon inside and pressing it down. And that also will help you to get it through. As part of cooking is we want things to turn out really nice, um, as nice as we can, not just to have an end product. And so that's why we do things like this. So like we don't have lumps in our sauce or lumps in our, in our um, pudding, that kind of thing. We do um, steps that will help you be proud of what you're going to be serving. Okay, so that's about in there. And if you have some little pieces that just don't go through the sieve, that's okay. That's the point of doing this. Okay. So over here, low, very low. Let me pour this in or stir this in. Okay, so you stir that right in there until it's smooth. You can definitely leave it on your burner if your burner is low. And if it's not boiling hard, every time I put mine back on that low burner, then it uh, starts boiling too hard. Now this will take a little bit, don't rush, um, because that powder, the cocoa powder likes to sit on top, but it will get mixed in. If you feel like a whisk will do you better right now, you could use a whisk. Just be careful and don't mix too hard so that you don't fly everything out of your pan. Looks like it's almost there, which is great. So it's still thin. It's kind of thin. It's very chocolatey looking. Now the next step is to pour in your chocolate chips, which is three fourths of a cup. And boy, I had a tough time double checking this particular recipe because I didn't tell you when to put in the vanilla and it's a teaspoon of vanilla. And as soon as we put the chocolate chips in and they melt, then we can put in the vanilla along with the butter. So I think I got it here. So it stays warm over here at this warm burner. And we need three fourths of a cup. Now I do not have a three fourths cup measuring cup, okay? Dry measuring cup and you wanna use your dry measuring cups. So we're using a fourth and a half. Let me scoop up my chocolate chips here and put them, pour them right in. There's a half. And there's a fourth. Okay. Those are our chocolate chips. And this is step number three, where it says to add them. So just stir them in. And then let's just let this set for a minute or two and they will melt in there really nice. And that's what's going to um, help this become a thicker kind of sauce. So it's more like what we might think about as um, hot fudge sauce that you might buy. While that's setting, you can definitely move along and get your teaspoon of vanilla. And don't measure right over your pot. Go. Right in. And we have one ingredient left. I'm gonna stir this up. See how those chocolate chips are melting. The chocolate chips help to make this look this thicker and also shiny. it melted. Mine's pretty much melted. Oh yeah. Almost. 
Almost there. And I'm still sticking with my wooden spoon, but if you want to use your whisk, you can use your whisk. Just don't be too crazy because you don't want to have a lot of cleanup. And you know, when you cook, you clean up or at least help clean up. You don't leave everything on the counter or in the sink for someone else. Okay, now, as long as it's all melted, then the last step is to add our chilled butter. And it calls for unsalted butter, but indeed you could just use regular salted butter if that's all you have. And I cut it into pieces so that it will all melt. And that will help add the richness to our um, hot fudge sauce. Now, after we get this all mixed in, I'm going to pull out the ice cream I made yesterday so I can show you what it looks like. And we'll put a scoop of hot fudge sauce on it and you can check it out. Yeah, unfortunately, this is not uh, a snack you'll be eating today because the ice cream needs to chill at least six hours, okay? And if you want to heat up, you can store your hot fudge sauce in the refrigerator. And um, if you want, you can heat it up when you're ready to have it. If you want warm hot fudge sauce, since it's called hot fudge sauce, and uh, just put it, put it into the microwave oven, but you want to be careful or put it into a pot on the stove. You don't want to overheat it, otherwise you might separate that butter out and I don't think it'll go back in again. So, there we go. There's our hot fudge sauce. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful hot fudge sauce. All right, now, now comes the fun part. I'm going to move this aside and we're going to get out. We're going to get out the ice cream that I made yesterday. And here we go. Get a bowl. It's hard. That's a good thing. And Let's get a scoop, huh? Oh, you guys, look at this. There you go. What do you think of that? Isn't that gorgeous? Your own ice cream. And then I made this hot, hot fudge sauce yesterday as well. And it thickened up a lot. It's not, I didn't put it in the fridge yet. There's the hot fudge sauce on top. There you go. What do you think? I think it's a success. I can't wait to hear how things go for you. So let me know, send a picture, enjoy. And um, hopefully we'll see you another time.